<laughs> Hello, my name is Dante. You're watching the channel Bliss Beings, where I explore spiritual subjects and lots of juicy goodness so that you can be more blissful. <laughs> um, today I want to talk about the different spiritual paths that, paths that are out there. Um, and I have been thinking about this a bit and kind of figured that there are four different realms or paths that most spiritual paths or practices fall into. And many people kind of uh, have this sort of idea that all of these paths are the same. Yet, if we look at what makes them different and distinct, we can gain a more full spectrum approach. Um, and really, I have been someone who has explored so many different avenues of um, gaining more knowledge about myself, gaining more ways to heal myself, to feel better, to help others in their healing. And, uh, you know, the more I explore, the more curious I am to explore the new doorways that open up. And I think that if we believe we get can get to a point where we just know it and it's done, um, that's usually a pretty ignorant state. <laughs> um, though we can get to a state where we do genuinely have an intuitive knowing of the things that we do need to know. And it may feel like we know everything, um, though, again, that can be an expanded ego state. Anyway, so <laughs> these four spiritual paths are what I will call uh, the path of ascension, the path of awakening, the yogic path, and the shamanic path. And I want to talk first about the path of ascension and the path of awakening, as these are two different ideas and two different paths. And a lot of people um, think that they are synonymous though they're actually quite different. So ascension is simply raising your vibration. It is becoming more of who you truly are, becoming more in touch with your own soul. And you do this by doing what is most exciting for you, by allowing yourself to listen to your heart continuously. And Bashar will say, whenever somebody asks, how do I raise my frequency? We we gave you the formula. Follow your highest excitement to the best of your ability with no insistence on any particular outcome. And that is ascension. So from this understanding, ascension can mean anything. This can mean for you to go on a great trip to explore different parts of the world, to explore different spiritual teachings or other practices or anything that is really exciting for you. That is what is making your soul unique, that is your unique offering. And discovering that brings you to ascend. So the more you become uniquely who you are and true to yourself, the more you will find yourself entering into these flow states. And a flow state can feel like there's no time and space. And if you follow that flow state more, you come into a place of unconditional love. And that's our emergence into the fifth dimension. So humanity collectively is on this path of ascension. Our planet is ascending. There are other timelines that there's still this kind of um, the splitting off of timelines that is occurring, that there's the remnants of um, old age energies, old paradigm energies that are going to split off from our Earth and go to a Earth that does not ascend and stays in these lower dimensional frequencies. Though our Earth, and if you choose to continue to follow your truth, will be a planet and you will be a person who ascends. And this means you will have this access to higher dimensional energies that are sharing this unconditional love and this feeling of lightness and oneness. It's dissolving your sense of separateness from a bigger picture. And with this, more psychic openings do start to activate as well. Later when I talk about the shamanic path, in many ways, um, a lot of the things that can happen naturally as a result of ascending are also part of a shamanic path. So they can bleed together a little bit. Um, though there's ways to, if you really go deeper into a shamanic path, accentuate the opening of those different gifts. So awakening is a bit different in that it's um, ascension, if you don't also choose awakening, can inflate your ego. Um, awakening is dissolving your sense of separate self or ego. So 
we have our human ego that says, I am this, I am my job, I am my family circumstances, I am my relationships and where I live. All of this has a lot to do with me. Um, I am even more important than this, my emotions and my thoughts. Having this strong identification with these aspects of our consciousness limits us and cuts us off. And it keeps us trapped in these loops. Um, then going beyond that, we can start to have spiritual experiences and then we identify with the exper spiritual experiences. And um, I mean, the most, <laughs> the best example of this are people who believe that they are Jesus. And this is a common phenomenon. And there is in New Age circles, a lot of people who don't go so far to say, I am Jesus, but they start to ascend, yet they don't awaken, they don't dissolve their separateness. And then they start to think all of these lights and phenomena and spiritual experiences they're having have something to do with them specifically, rather than it is an expression of consciousness, it is an expression of source that is happening through this soul expression. So whereas ascension is awakening to your soul, awakening to what is unique about you and following it, um, awakening is dissolving that fixation on the self to go beyond the self to the no self or the zero self or to source or spirit. There's many different terms for it. So you do this by really questioning who is it that is thinking the thought? Who am I? Who is feeling the emotion? Who is teaching the workshop? Who is recording the video? <laughs> um, and as you start to really have this self-inquiry and you allow yourself to go beyond yourself with time and, and persistence, you dissolve the fixation of the ego on the limited experience and start to get a sense of this emptiness and beyond this emptiness this lightness and beyond that to source the consciousness of all that is and this path of awakening is really to um, you know you start to experience everything as a field of consciousness you start to understand that everything is just consciousness energy and with this awareness you can feel how you are not separate from anything around you and Awakening, you will still, um, you can still have a lot of these patterns and these fixations and these tendencies and these attachments. Though when you start to awaken, you stop identifying with those patterns. And when the identification stops, the problems themselves also become easier. They don't necessarily go away, but it isn't about that when you are focusing on awakening. It is about realizing who you truly are. So awakening is very much related to the yogic path, um, though the difference here is that the yogic path, the goal of eight limbs of yoga is samadhi. So samadhi is complete and absolute absorption with that which you focus upon. You can use yoga for awakening if you bring the point of your samadhi to source itself, though yoga has many other points of focus before that, like experiencing samadhi with your soul, with your breath, um, even with a candle flame or with a mantra, you can go and enter into a samadhi state. Yet that is the highest limb of yoga and there are these many other limbs, but what is more most commonly known as yoga is the asana practice that is the physical exercises that are so common in our world now. And this is just one way of getting there though the yoga path is very important in the sense that it clears the blockages from our physical body. It strengthens our body and makes us more open so that when we do start to awaken or to ascend, there's this great influx of energies that are for most overwhelming. And this can result in symptoms in the body. Yet when we have detoxed ourselves with yoga, with the asanas, and if you go deeper into yoga, there's kriyas that are many different ways that you cleanse your body through different practices. This opens up the energy channel and it releases those toxins so that when you get in touch with those bigger energies, um, there is more space inside of you.
for all of that light to enter, all of that consciousness to integrate in your system. And so the last path, the shamanic path, um, is really the path of connecting with the natural world to generate power. This power, if you are on a pure shamanic path, is used for healing. Um, and if you are on a more negative shamanic path, in uh, Latin America, where I am now, it's called the path of brujeria, or being a brujo, a witch. Um, though from other, uh, that translation is not so perfect because there are light witches as well, though it has more negative connotations here. Um, so it, you can also generate the same power in order to use it to harm others if you are not choosing that awakening path as well. And um, the shamanic path has many different approaches. It's not just using plants. Uh, generally, there is this requirement to enter into an altered state of consciousness or a dreamlike state of consciousness. Plants take you there though that's not the way for everyone and there are many people who should not use the plants. Um, in general, drumming or music, trance-like music is very common to induce those trances as well. Though in different forms of shamanism and different shamanic practices, there's so many ways that we can alter our consciousness to go into these different states. So sh the shamanic path is also a path of learning how to connect with these other planes of existence that are places from which we can draw power, that we can, uh, in a dream, for example, attain uh, a power, attain an object that becomes a part of our energetic structure that we can then use in our healing work. Um, practices like Reiki are, in a way, shamanic practices by their nature, as it's bringing us to channel energy and channeling and connecting to source is part of the shamanic path to draw forth that vital energy and that spiritual energy um, to use it for our healing. Sh shamanism is often very similar to yogic paths in that there is this um, requirement to purge, to use plants or to use uh, practices to clean and purify your body. And this again allows you to be more open to those energies. The difference between the shamanic path and the yoga path is that there, there's no teaching in the shamanic path about finding that absolute state of pure consciousness, whereas that is a great goal of the yoga path. So having that awareness from the yoga path will aid in the shamanic path to give you more ability to concentrate um, as well there's no, well, there's some shamanic pra uh, paths or lineages that have a physical uh, practice to strengthen the body as part of it, though it's not a part of all shamanic practices or people on a shamanic path now. So um, one thing that I have been at times challenged by in my path is maybe going very deep into yoga and finding that they reject many ideas and many practices from shamanism without understanding it fully. Likewise, on a shamanic path, people are not as aware of their health and of their well-being as they could be. They're not really doing the work to keep their bodies strong. And I see many uh, shaman who are very old and feeble because they, they haven't been doing those practices. There's now at this time many different uh, tools or diff many different um, institutes and retreat centers and schools out there that combine the paths of shamanism and yoga that go so well together. And I believe that all of these paths are going to unify and that it was just at the times when the energies were lower on our planet that they had to be developed uniquely on their own. Um, being on my own path for seven years and kind of branching out back and forth between the different paths I've seen that this has expanded my awareness a lot. It's given me a lot more knowledge, though people who have chosen to just stay with one path have gone so much deeper into the, just that one path. So as well, there's the, it's a, the double-edged sword effect of choosing many paths, 
means that you develop more slowly on each of them, though it does give you that broader framework of understanding, which for me is um, much more important and to for society at large, I feel as well, it's very important to be able to have some understanding of everything. Um, so eventually I want to create a uh, a school of some sort that combines the practices and the awareness from all of these paths because they are all very important and very valuable in helping us to awaken to what we're truly capable of. Um, like I said, the, there seems to be a lot in common between a shamanic path and an ascension path as many who start to focus on ascension will find themselves going off into these dreamscapes or gaining the ability to channel. Um, more traditional shamanic practices would consider more uh, channeling to be a possession, uh, being possessed by different spirits. So it's more in the kind of new age that now we're channeling in a different way where we have maybe a bit more conscious uh, choice in what's coming through and we're working with different entities from another level. Um, there's something to gain from all of it, however. So yeah, maybe I'll keep this video short and just outline those different paths today. And I hope that's given you some understanding of um, where each of these paths helps us expand and what they offer and why it's important to focus on all of these things. I guess the last idea just to reiterate upon is that the ascension is different than awakening. And ascension is really coming to embody and fully experience our soul, what is unique to us. And that will also include all of our other lifetimes of expression, our guides, um, they're part of our soul as well, our oversoul. Though then when we start to identify too strongly with those experiences we're having with our past lives or with any of this, it actually creates a spiritual ego structure or it strengthens the pre-existing spiritual ego structure and eventually that's going to cause a uh, limitation for us. It must cause a limitation though eventually we will become aware of that limitation and awakening is to see what is beyond that, to ask really who is there behind my soul, behind all of these different lifetimes and this starts to take us to a plane where Oh, every life, every being, every entity, that's part of the bigger picture and that's part of the bigger uh, me, who I am. Yet, if you go even beyond that, there's no self at all. Um, and this is a very humbling experience that allows you to surrender to a much deeper degree of peace. There's one idea that just popped in. Let me see if I can find it. And yeah, so the awakening path as well on its own is often not enough. Um, many spiritual teachers can awaken to these very high degrees of consciousness, um, yet because they haven't done the purification in their bodies, they haven't strengthened first their ego structure to create, well, a healthy ego structure. And maybe there's still a lot of uh, self-judgment, self-criticism within the ego structure. And then you start dissolving the ego structure. All of those patterns are still there. Yet it feels very contradictory because you're seeing the illusion of the ego structure. Yet at the same time, it's not healthy. And so many people who have this experience are like, you know, people that are considered very high spiritual masters yet that have cancer. Uh, people who become enlightened yet are in crippling pain. And I have seen many people that are very spiritual and emit a very strong energy, but their stuff isn't worked out yet. And so that is why working on those other paths is just as essential. And while you may not go so fully into your development in one path by choosing all the paths at once, it allows you to avoid a lot of the pain and the, um, the purging, the in very intense purging that comes up. And of course you can avoid all of that entirely. It's very natural for there to be these uh, ascension or awakening symptoms where these
blockages in us are purified by the energy. And when we start to see the benefit that those experiences have us, how it purifies us and makes us more capable of being strong in our spiritual connection, we can greet them without so much resistance. And that makes the whole journey a lot easier. So I have hoped you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos there. And I'm available for one-to-one -one channeling sessions and uh, guidance sessions, coaching sessions, if you would like to dive into that with me. Again, the website's blissbeings.com. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have a miraculously joyful day. <laughs>